Help me, I have too many ideas for dolls and too little time. Right now, as you are watching this video, I'm on my way to Japan to go bonkers on Dance Dance Revolution and be surprised that there's no subtitles. My friends Alex and Barb from Enchanterium and me came up with the idea to give you guys a magical collab. And to be exact, we are creating Ari and Sinra in their Spirit Blossom skins from League of Legends. So yes, it's another time for miniature cosplay and I'm stoked. Okay, so I only have about one week to make this whole doll, so I need to start like yesterday. yesterday. So. Let's get this rolling. <laughs> In order to start with this project, I mix some forbidden cake batter and pour it into my Saturn printer. I then start the first print and pray to the 3D printing gods that this print will turn out somewhat usable. In time lapse, prints always look so fast, but this print did take around three and a half hours to finish. Blue Pixie made this custom Ari face and the shoes, and I really can't wait to work on the doll. Once the print was done, I saw that my prayers had not been heard, but at least half the print was usable. Eventually, I managed to print all the pieces though and washed and cured them in my curing station. Last piece to print were the shoes that are joined with the feet this time to give her the perfect tabby shoes. With the shoes printed, I once again have a full doll bowl of body parts that my assistant Leon already kindly sanded for me, so that I can hop onto assembling the doll right away. I will be reusing Claudine's ears and hands for this project because they fit perfectly for Ari as well. Before stringing the doll, I first need to attach a bunch of magnets to her. I placed two magnets in the back where I will be attaching her nine tails later first. I really hope I can make the nine tailed version work because it would look so cool. I then place more magnets in the ankle joints, hands, feet and wrist joints, the face plate and hat back on top of the hat back and the ears so we can attach them later. And then I'm taking an elastic band with a length of two soap bars in a row and first string her arms through both armholes and then string the pieces like beads and put some sticks on the end of the arms before pulling out the stringing wires and hook the wrist joints on. I put on some small S-hooks onto the elastics. And then I only need to pull out the stick and have a perfectly strung arm. Now I just need to attach the magnetic hands and the first part of the doll is strung. Yay! For the long part of the doll I take a long elastic with the length of a bowling pin and thread it through head back, upper, middle, lower torso and split it there to string both legs simultaneously and secure the ends with sticks again. I needed some pliers here to pull the elastic, but that just means that it's perfectly strong tight. <laughs> and then in the same fashion as the arms, I pull out the wires, hook on the ankle joints and remove the sticks. Awesome! Now I can attach the faceplate and the ears. I really love her look already. Let's take some before shots of the doll. <laughs> she looks a bit funny with the white feet, but once she's all dressed and painted, it will look really, really good, I promise. I love her facial features so much, I think she might really look like Ari in the end. Well, at least I hope so. <laughs> okay, how about we start with Ari's wig today. I prepared a wig cap on one of my Nova dolls already and will use her as a model because she has the same hat size as Ari. For hair, I will be using this magenta colored hair that I harvested from a wig. Before the complicated part in the front of the wig, I first glue the whole back of it layer by layer with hot glue. My advice here is to use finger protection if you do not have Teflon for fingers through years of burning them with hot glue. <laughs> I saved a life. My own. Once the hat bag is filled up, I start by shaping the front hairs. I first glue some side strands to the front on both left and right side for her front curls. I then cut them shorter and take my small curling wand to curl them inwards. Thanks to my hairdresser friend Chris, I now know how to get those curls into the correct shape. Using some got to be hairspray glue, I style the curl in shape and do the same on the other side as well. And then, with another strand added, I will make the little heme bangs. I tamed the strand down with heat already and now just cut it in shape. And then just do the same on the opposite side as well. And then it is time to add the little bangs that have this cute outside swoosh. I curved them here a bit already just to be able to see how short to cut them, then shape them with my scissors and set them in with hairspray. My SD card was full here and my camera did not warn me, so we fast forward a little to cutting the V-shaped bangs and basically adding each glued strand to either the side bangs or the middle part of the bangs. I realized that using my mini iron to flick them out was a lot easier. <laughs> Before finishing off the last two wefts, I just roughly cut the hair so it has the right length and also decided to simply airbrush the gradient Ari's hair has with some acrylic paint because I forgot to buy synthetic hair dye for fibers. But since I'm not applying a thick layer of paint, this was a very nice solution and it looks really, really good. 
To make the parting, I prep two folded wefts like this and then simply glue one towards the front and one towards the back of the wig. And for the final step, I will use my bigger curling wand and give Ari's wig some super soft curls. And with that last step, her wig is done. I'm actually super proud that I was able to style this rather complicated hairstyle in the front all by myself and actually had fun with this. Synthetic fibers are always a bit harder to style, but I think I managed for this project. <laughs> Since I wasn't sure I could make the nine tails for our work, how about we try to make these next? I got some light tealish blue colored fur to make them and first cut up the tail shape from it. I figured that if you carefully cut the fur with scissors from the back, the fibers won't be cut and it will look fantastic afterwards. Two mirrored pieces will make one tail. I now have to pin and sew them together, finished sides in and all fibers in like this. I left the gap open on the bottom and then flipped them inside out. For a bit more dimension, I will add some stuffing material to it until it looks something like this. And then I repeat the same steps 8 more times until I end up with 9 tails. And then it's shaving time! To give the tails a bit more shape, I decided to use some hair clippers to cut the fibers shorter. I've seen people using this technique for animal ears and so I thought it might work for this tail and indeed it did! It looks so much better and has more shape now. I then repeat that for all the other tails as well and now have to insert an aluminum wire into all of the tails. I cut it off a little longer like this and then using some uwu glue to close the tail and glue the wires in place as well. I also apologize for my dirty hands but I spilled paint before and it stained my fingers and I just couldn't get rid of it. When the wire was glued in, I then take some thin masking tape strips and tape the pattern of the tails from her onto the tail. And then it's time to airbrush again. I use a darker blue and spray it carefully all over the masking tape strips until they have the intensity I like. And when they all have dried, I can peel off the masking tape and reveal the light stripes on the tails. I was so happy this technique, I by the way saw Kim Petsu cosplay using on their Ari Spirit Blossom cosplay, worked out so well, so I ended up with nine beautiful tails. But the real challenge was to make them attachable to the doll, right? <laughs> I came up with the idea to make a magnetic harness and laser cut this shape I made in Adobe Illustrator with my X-Tool M1 and some plywood. It has bigger gaps for magnets and 9 small gaps for the wires of the tails to go through. And yeah, I basically then just start by threading the tails onto the harness and bend the wires so that they hold their shape. I try to place them neatly while slowly using my sanity it seems. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of cam and then show you how it looks like. This seems to work. Nice. Woohoo! I made it work and it looks so good and I can pose the tails. <sighs> okay, now just the magnets are missing and then we can see how it looks on the doll. So uh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> And yeah, I can proudly say that this technique actually worked and I'm so happy that this tail construction didn't come with weird time-consuming obstacles. <laughs> I honestly didn't think it would look this good. I'm so proud. Okay, but now I kind of really want to paint Ari's face, so how about we do that next? I already prepped her face with a layer of Mr. Super Clear and first, as always, spread some micro glitter all over her face before taking light pink pastel chalk dust to blush her cheeks. I slowly build up the pigment until they have the intensity that I like and also blush her forehead a little. With a smaller brush, I can then add some color to her lips as well with a slightly darker shade of pink. To give her nose a little more dimension, I also add a bit blushing on the side of it as well. Now she's ready to be sealed, so I can then take my pencil and sketch out the shape of her eyeliner. I go slow and try to give it a nice shape that goes well with the eye shape. Awesome! Now I just need to copy mirror paste it onto the other side manually. <laughs> I also decided to sketch out the eyebrow with light brown pastel chalk dust. With my kneaded eraser that was lost underneath the work plate for months and apparently contains now some hidden treasures, I can give some shape to the brow. I really should get a new kneaded eraser at some point. I then just sketch out the second brow the same way and can then add some matte black acrylic paint to carefully fill in her eyeliner and totally not mess up the line here. <laughs> oh sh**. Luckily this was an easy fix and I can now paint Ari's whiskers? Whiskeresque cheek marks. <laughs> I sketched them out with a pink pencil and when I did this to both sides of the face, I used some blush pink gouache paint and carefully fill them in. 
In between, I always like to drop the faceplate every now and then. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> After the cheek marks were done, it was time for the lashes. Unfortunately, my camera decided that this part was completely unworthy of focusing, so I'm really sorry if the footage is blurry, but I simply use a nail art detail brush and brown gouache paint to draw her lower lashes. And when the lashes look neat on both sides of the face, I blend them into the face up by using dark brown pastel chalk dust on a small brush. Okay, almost done with the painting! Before sealing her one final time with MSC, I dust on some magical iridescent microglitter to her cheeks and spread it to my desire. And when it was sealed off and dry, I used some Liquitex high gloss varnish and apply three coats to her lips and lower lash waterline. Now just some 3D lashes are missing. This time I decided to chop up the lashes into little bits and place them one by one and I must say this method worked really nicely. I do the same to the other eye off cam and while she's drying let's make her some eyes. I already made these little eye bases from white UV resin and a silicone eye mold and pop them out of it first. Then I use some sky blue acrylic paint and paint both irises blue. For some pearlescent glow, I add some pearly microglitter with a Q-tip when they were dry. To give her pupils, I add a drop of resin to the bases and then use these small oval-shaped rhinestones to give Ari her signature slit pupil. With a slightly wet toothpick, you can easily place the tiny stones in the eye. I also decided to add a tiny bit of blue holographic glitter just for some extra sheen. I cure everything in place and then add one final dome of UV resin and cure that for two minutes in my UV lamp. And after curing they look like this and I'm glad they turned out this nice. And here's also the finished and dried face. Alright, let's join them both together with the magic of process video editing and boom! Oh, she looks so so pretty. I'm happy the eyes worked this well and her lashes are so gorgeous. Now I really can't wait to make her outfit. How about we start with the kimono dress? After making the pattern for it, I cut it from white cotton fabric and first need to sew together the two front pieces. Since the dress is very form-fitting, I needed to make an additional seam on the front to make it look nice on her chest area. When I joined all four front pieces together, I then take the front sleeve pieces and sew them on along the small little sleeve seam here and here. Okay, now I set these pieces aside and work on the back piece. Here I simply needed to sew the back sleeve pieces finished sides in onto the small seams as well. Before we will iron on some purple elements, I need to prepare the skirt part with this little tear strip that I sew on finished sides in like this. Ironed in place it looks like this and now it's time to cut out some purple shapes for the dress. I made some vector graphics for the shapes already and just cut them from purple fabric vinyl and then weed out all the excess material to reveal the shapes. For the skirt I will then be taking these L-shaped pieces and place them onto the pattern pieces like this. Okay, now we have to iron quite a lot, so let's switch to the iron press. Okay, so all the purple pieces are placed and now I have to iron these. So let's do that. As you can see, there are quite some pieces that need to be ironed, but don't worry, it will all make sense soon. <laughs> After ironing everything for 20 seconds at 165 degrees Celsius, I then peel off the transfer vinyl while it is still hot and then we can proceed with the dress. I drew the shapes for the upper part of the dress onto the teal colored fabric and cut them out. Since this fabric frays by just looking at it, I immediately use some fray check around the edges that remain open. I then just need to cut out the piece directly along the pur purply, I wrote purply. <laughs> yeah, I just cut it along the purply vinyl and then try to somehow sew this curved strip along the curved edge of the dress. I pinned one of the front pieces here already and had to very carefully stitch it together finished sides in. Okay, I somehow made it work and sewed these together. This was extremely, extremely difficult, but it worked. And they are sewn together. The back is sewn together too. And now I just put these together on top of the sleeve seams, basically. And do that on both sides. It is funky looking when not on the doll like this, but now we can finally join together the classic sleeve and side seams after I cleaned up the bottom of the sleeves as well. I pinned it together and was pretty excited about this whole process. <laughs> Let's do this! I just tried it on and 
it looks so good oh my god <laughs> awesome now we can set this aside and make the skirt real quick the skirt was a lot easier to make because i'd only had to sew together the side seams of it finished sides in sewn together and iron in place it looks like this it looks so weird when it's not on the doll. Ah! <laughs> With this wonky looking upper dress piece at hand, I then pin upper and lower dress part together, finish sides in and sew them in place. Time to make the beautiful kimono sleeves. I actually purchased the cosplay pattern from Kinpatsu Cosplay for this because they included the graphics for the sleeves, so I saved some time here and didn't need to make the vector graphics for them. I simply printed them onto some transparent iron-on transfer vinyl and need to cut them out roughly before I can iron them onto the cotton fabric. All right, I placed this upside down now and here are the other two. I will make them in two batches. Let's hope this works. Oh God, I'm so scared because this is not so easy to handle this stuff. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, this transfer vinyl sometimes likes to not transfer at all. So I made sure I had the temperature set correctly and ironed it on with baking paper in between. With shaky hands, because this was the last sheet of transfer vinyl I had, I peeled it off and... I did it. Ah, oh, this looks so good. Wow. Okay, I just have to make the other side and then we can solve. I was so relieved it worked out. I actually procrastinated on making the sleeves for a day because I was so scared I would mess it up. Worried me never. To sew them, I simply fold the sleeves on top of each other and sew them with one big open side and one small open side. Turned around and with glued around seam allowances on the big open side they looked like this and are now ready to be installed on the dress. I first check if they fit nicely and then use my Uhu Alice Cleaver to glue the sleeves into the dress. And now it's time to make some flexible soft armor gold trim. I made some vector graphics for the golden edges and now cut them with my laser cutter from 2mm EVA foam. This way the pieces will be cut super neat and way better than I could do it by hand. I then place them onto a little surface with some masking tape and use some soft UV resin to apply it all over the strip and the edges of the strip using a little old brush. I need to spread it as neat as I can before curing it for a couple minutes under my UV lamp. Then I peel it off the surface and cut away any resin residue or resin do. <laughs> before using my chrome gold nail powder and an applicator to rub the gold pigment onto the strip. It turns chrome golden immediately and the strip stays mega flexible and stretchable. Yes! It was a bit time consuming to make all the gold trims, but they look so good. All that's left is to glue them onto the dress using contact glue. When working with EVA foam, toxic booger glue is the best glue to work with. I spread it on both parts, let it dry and then join the gold trim and dress together. I was honestly completely blown away by how nice this gold trim looked on the dress. And it also gave the whole dress a little more shape and stability. I also add the golden trim to the skirt of the dress and in the very end just need to add a final strip around the sleeves. And with a little snap button as a closure added, the dress is done. I'm beyond happy how nice this turned out and I will definitely use this gold trim technique more often because it seems to be such a cool and diverse method. Let's make her obi next. I already cut out and fray checked a purple and teal colored satin strip and will first glue around the upper and lower seam allowances with some contact glue. Then I can take the teal strip, put some uhu glue onto the back side and glue it to the middle of the purple strip. For the cord I'm taking a 2mm pink cord and glue two cord strips of it to the middle of the teal strip. With that, the base for the obi is already done. Now for the complicated part, the bow. I first take this teal rectangle and fold it like this to sew along the short seam while leaving a gap open. After sewing and ironing it flat to the middle of the back, I can then sew the side parts like this. Turned inside out, we have a very neat rectangle that needs to be a bit more cushiony, so I stuff it with some polyester filling as well. I then stitch it together like a scar and add a gathering stitch to the middle of the bow so I can pull it tight and wrap around the thread before securing it. And then you should end up with something like this. To make the cord ribbon I will need three little double circles and make them by simply rolling the cord together and securing the ends with glue while making sure they are all equally in size. I also made these little cord tassels of cam as well as these small polymer clay sakura petals that I now just need to paint pink with some magenta colored acrylic paint. 
To make them look even more flawless, I decided to gloss them with UV nail polish and cure them under my UV limb for a minute. Then I can peel them off the tape and set them aside alongside with the other parts. For the purple ribbon parts, I first have to iron on some gold fabric vinyl strips onto the purple fabric. I wait for them to cool down and then can peel off the transfer vinyl to reveal the chromey shininess. Before cutting them out, I drew on the pattern pieces with a chalk pencil and can then cut out and fray check them. To glue around the seam allowances, I use some contact glue again and carefully glue them around, trying to be very accurate so it will look like the one that I already made of cam. With a finger snap we can fast forward and now I simply have to fold and glue the four pieces together like this. And then it's finally time to assemble all the pieces for the bow. First, I glue the little tassel cord pieces to one side of the longer purple ribbon piece and then glue on the other side of the purple ribbon. Then I take the smaller purple pieces and glue them on top. I take one of the cord circles and glue it on like this and then glue the other two circles to the blue ribbon like this. And then I glue the blue ribbon to the purple piece. Now I just need to glue all the little sakura petals to the blue ribbon with some hot glue and for the final piece I will be using a big golden bell. To assemble it nice and flat I need to cut off the little hanger first and then use a good amount of hot glue to join the bell and the ribbon. With this last step the ribbon is done and can now be glued to the obi with a tiny blob of hot glue as well. And with some snap buttons as a closure we have a finished obi and I think it looks really really cool. Making the ribbon was so much fun for some reason. I just really like this crafty stuff. <laughs> also I just realized that you can see my reflection in the bell. <laughs> Okay, last clothing piece before the final accessories. The stockings! I cut them from actual white and purple human tights. The upper part from white and the lower part from the purple tights. After doing so, I can then take the top and bottom pieces for each side and join them together, finished sides in. Sewing the corner of the left hand piece was a bit tricky, but I made it work. After sewing, the pieces looked like this and now I sew them together along the short seam, finished sides in. Before adding some golden details, I cut notches into the upper seam allowances and glue it around with my glue stick. I prepped some golden strips already that I will now add like this, plus a thicker strip on the bottom for the cuffed look along the stocking. I end up with something like this and can then glue around the bottom seam allowances as well. And then we can finally join together the long seam as well. Awesome! Now just some gold trim is missing on these parts as well, so I make them in a similar way as I did on the dress and glue two strips together for the top part of the stocking. And then I put contact glue everywhere I want to glue the trim and carefully glue it around the upper seam of the stocking and around the seam where the white joins with the purple. And with that last step we have some mega cool armor like stockings. This gold trim technique is really something else. It makes everything look so polished. Ah! Now there are just a few more accessories missing. Let's make Ari's choker first. I already prepped and cut the initial choker from purple fabric and golden fabric vinyl and now make the small little ribbon from some teal colored cord. I make some loops with the cord and secure them with a small amount of hot glue. It looks almost like a pretzel. <laughs> okay, I do the same with the lower piece and then uh, we can assemble everything together. <laughs> With the second piece added, I can then glue two little cord strips on top of the middle and will make a little tassel piece by simply brushing and straightening a piece of cord and gluing it to the back side of the ribbon. And then I just glue the ribbon onto the center of the choker. Now I just needed to add a little snap button off cam and with that we have a really cute little choker. It's super easy to put on with a button and looks so cute. Okay, one more accessory to make. Her hair decoration. I use six small satin ribbon pieces and first glue them together like this. And then I join three of them to one little ribbon thingy. <laughs> Please speak! After losing my ability to speak, I do the same on the other side as well. I will be using these smaller belts on her hair accessories, but realized I almost forgot something. Almost forgot the long ends. <laughs> To clean off the ends, I cut them folded at an angle and burn the edges with the flames of love before folding the long ends in half and gluing them together. I then just need to glue the top part of the ribbon onto the long ends and will then use the melting passion of hot glue to join the belts and the satin ribbon together. 
Oh, it's so cute. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, these hair accessories are just so cute. I low-key wish I had them for myself, although those belts would probably drive me insane. <laughs> but they're so gorgeous nonetheless. Now I just need to paint her ears and I also do that with my air... <laughs> I want air bra. Bruh. <laughs> and to give them a bit more depth, I dust on some lighter pastel chalks. And of course iridescent micro glitter can't be missing from the scene either. Absolute last thing for the doll were the shoes. I already gave them a coat with white spray paint and paint the ribbons on the shoe pink and the sole black with matte acrylic paint. The finished shoes slash feet look really pretty and with this final piece finished we can finally assemble the doll. This was the first time for me as well to put her completely together and from my reaction you can tell I was just mega excited. <laughs> oh my god guys! <laughs> let, let me show you the doll. <laughs> my spirit blossom Ari. I hope you love her as much as I do. With this video I will also be going on a little break from YouTube but don't worry I will be back in the beginning of June with the next Monster High redesign. Also please make sure to check out Alex and Barb's video as well. Their doll is so so beautiful as well. Thanks as always to all of my patrons as well. You are all so amazing for making all of this possible. All right see you guys soon in the next video. I will be back. I promise. Bye!